Now Greens leader Richard Di Natale, who is standing down from the leadership and from Parliament. Announced to my party room colleagues that I'm resigning as parliamentary leader of the Australian Greens. Uh, it's been a huge honour and a privilege to do this job. It's been the greatest honour of my life uh, to be able to lead uh, a movement uh, that is committed to all of the things that I believe so deeply in. Uh, I'm so grateful to have had the support of a fantastic parliamentary team. I'm so grateful to have had the support of thousands of members and volunteers, supporters uh, who believe in everything that we're fighting for. Uh, look, I could lots of small things about this job that are sometimes frustrating and annoying, but the bottom line is it's a tough and demanding job. And my boys are 9 and 11. I want to be present in their lives. Uh, my wife has been a huge support for me in my career. I want to be able to support her in her career. Um, I leave the party knowing that we are the only party that has been consistent in acknowledging the climate crisis we're in and has the only serious policy response to the climate emergency. I leave the party in good shape. We achieved our second best ever election result at the last election. If we just repeat that result, we'll elect three new senators and have a shot at balance of power. I think we're going to do better than that. I think what you're seeing is right across the community, people acknowledging that it's the Greens who are the only party serious about the climate crisis. Um, it's a tough and demanding job. Uh, it's a job that obviously it takes not just a personal toll, but a toll on your family. And look, my boys are 9 and 11. In a few years' time, they're probably not going to want to know their old man. Uh, they're going to be, at the, at the moment, they still think he's OK. And I just want to be more present in their lives. It's the bottom line. Uh, I leave knowing that I've had such tremendous support uh, from all of my parliamentary colleagues. I want to thank them. I want to thank Adam and Larissa for being there for me every moment. I want to thank every single one of our MPs who have been so positive and encouraging and understanding of, of this decision. Um, what we know is that uh, we have as a nation just endured uh, one of the most horrific events in the nation's history. This is now an opportunity for a new leader uh, to step up at a time when the nation's focus is on this place and to really demonstrate that we are a party brimming with talent uh, where a new leader can stamp their authority uh, over a government uh, that has been just catastrophic in their failures to respond uh, to this horrendous crisis. Uh, I want to say to all of our members and supporters, I know this comes as, as a shock, it has been one of the most difficult decisions of my life, but the time is right. It's right for me and for the boys and for Lucy. Uh, it's time, it, it, I think that it's a t the time's right for, for the Greens. Rejuvenation and renewal is very important in politics. Our movement is bigger than one person. Uh, a movement that relies on one person isn't a movement. Uh, we are bigger than one person. We have so many people, millions of Australians, who care deeply about all of the things that we're fighting for and they'll continue uh, to see the Greens fight hard in our parliament and be their voice in our parliament. Uh, I don't know what comes next for me. As I said, there'll be a bit more time with the family. I'll continue to be active in Greens politics. Uh, I'll continue to fight for action on the climate crisis, tackling inequality, justice for First Nations people. There are so many things I'm very passionate about. I know I won't be out there following that well-worn path of former pollies who go out there and spruik for the gambling industry or for the banks or for the fossil fuel lobby. Um, and again, I just want to say to each and every one of our uh, supporters, uh, thank you for all of the faith and trust you've shown in me. Uh, and uh, you'll see the Greens continue to go from strength to strength and take the fight right up to the Morrison government. Happy to take a few questions. Why now? It's just the right time. Um, I think, look, I had 
Some of you will know I had major surgery at the end of last year. Uh, that's pretty good for your perspective. Uh, it took a bit out of me. And when I came to the view that I wasn't going to contest the next election, I mean, if I was to contest the next election, I'm really committing to at least another four or five years in the gig, and I couldn't do that. I couldn't do that to my family. And so when I think you've come to that decision, uh, it's incumbent on you to hand on to the next generation of Greens leaders. And uh, you just look at what's happened in this place. I've been in this gig, what, 10 years? I've seen half a dozen Prime Ministers come and go. Uh, I've seen political chaos and turmoil all around us. We've had our challenges, but we have been the most stable and enduring political force in our parliament, and we're growing. We're going from strength to strength, and I feel very confident in the future for the Greens. Sorry? Well, that's going to be a decision for the party room. It's probably worth me just uh, letting you know what the process looks like. Uh, there'll be a party room ballot. Our party room will stipulate that we have a party room uh, ballot in 24 hours. Uh, so we expect that there'll be uh, a ballot or potentially a consensus decision, depending on the, who nominates, uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, so we'll let that process play out. As for me personally, um, look, I just see former leaders who hang around the parliament like a bad smell and I think, what the hell are you doing there? You know, I can't believe that we have some of these jokers hanging around causing problems for future leaders. I think the best thing you can do uh, once you've made a decision to resign from this place is to leave your phone number with the person who follows you and to let them know that you're always there should they need your advice, uh, but only if they want your advice. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to resign uh, as a senator once my replacement's chosen. I expect that'll happen at some point uh, towards the middle of the year. Just on the future, just on the future of the Green <coughs> Senator being a colleague, do you foresee an alliance with Labor potentially oh. in the next election? Uh, look, what we know is in 2010, the laws of uh, electoral arithmetic meant that there was no other choice uh, for the Labor Party to come to some arrangement with the Greens. Uh, I've always believed in cooperative politics. I've always believed that the best way we're going to achieve things in this place is by working you know, across party lines to get things done. And you only need to look at climate change, which has been a catastrophic failure. In my time in this place, I think of all the good things that we've achieved. Uh, I mean, look, we took on marriage equality before anyone else wanted to take on that fight. Uh, and I was so proud as leader to be in here and to see marriage equality become law. We've now got a national anti-corruption watchdog passing with the support of the Senate. It was the Greens for decades who have been leading the charge on that. Uh, I think of the Banking uh, Royal Commission. Again, the Greens are driving force behind that. The Royal Commission into the disability sector. Taking on some hard stuff, medicinal cannabis um, and drug law reform. Things that in this parliament never get discussed. And, and I've been really proud to be able to take them on and have the courage to tackle hard <laughs> issues and treating things like drug abuse as a, as a health issue. Uh, but I've got to say, being here as a new senator, uh, and in 2011, working with the Labor Party to achieve a price on carbon, the Clean Energy Finance Corporation, the Australian Renewable Energy Agency, which endure today, rolling out billions of dollars into renewable energy projects. I mean, that was a sign, it was the one bright moment in a decade of climate denialism and, you know, political manoeuvring. So I, I was really proud to be a senator and to see those laws passed, and I feel that there is a significant shift within the Australian community. There's a big shift in momentum here. The climate crisis is now front and centre in everyone's thinking. And I feel optimistic and confident that we can get there again. Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take questions today. They'll have their opportunity to do it. But why don't you ask me, mate? Um, maybe if, if you have the answer, I'd like to know whether Larissa Waters and Adam Band the candidates for your... Team. Well, they'll make their positions absolutely clear, I'm sure, over the coming you know, hours to their party room colleagues. But I think anyone who wants to put their hand up is going to want to tell their party room colleagues first, and rather than broadcast is, broadcasting... Now, despite a, a question is the, a, a, an important question... They sure are. Next Senator, question. You're not, you're not a career politician? No. Your family is obviously... Yep. You. Yes. Is it difficult for people in your circumstances to have a career, a sustained career, in 
Sure is. Yeah, it's a hard gig. I, I, look, it's a privilege to do it. So there's a couple of things I'll probably say about that, and I'll reflect on it a bit over time. It's a tough gig. And these positions, positions of leadership like this, will always be difficult positions. And I think there's only so much you can do to change that, but there are some things that we can do. Um, it's an honour and a privilege to do it. Um, your family makes sacrifices to support you in the role. Uh, you make sacrifices yourself to take on these roles. But I don't want to go away thinking of people that get the impression that this is something we do reluctantly. We do it knowing that the things we're fighting for are things we believe in and that those sacrifices are worth it. Um, I, I, th I think we, there are some things, though, as a parliament that we could reflect on and, and try and attract people who bring a, a different set of values to this place. And you only need to look around to know that um, the place is stacked with career politicians, uh, that it's very unrepresentative of the Australian community, that it doesn't have the diversity. We're supposed to be a representative democracy, but this place doesn't represent the Australian people. So we do need to look long and hard about what are the, some of those things that we can do to change that. And, you know, over the coming weeks and months ahead, I might have something to say on that. But right now, I mean, I, I leave this job knowing I gave it my all, that it's a huge privilege to do it, um, that we've achieved a lot, that we've had a lot of frustrations along the way. But it's the nature of these jobs. And again, I leave, I suppose, on my own terms, knowing I've had so much support and knowing that when you look at what's going on at the moment with some of our you know, political opponents, we Greens are the most stable, enduring, united political force and uh, we're bigger than one person. Senator, yeah. Senator, yeah. Hang on, hang on. It's what I love about I love about you guys. Do you want to give the whole quote? It was about um, 20% over a decade. Oh, over a decade. Yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. correct. So, yep. Okay. At the last election, the moment poll, 10% though, breaking the reps, 10% a little bit more. Yeah. Are you disappointed that you haven't made? Any progress towards that, towards that goal? Is it getting too hard for smaller parties given the competition in the minor party field from people like Palmer and Yeah, yeah. There's a lot in that question. There's a hell of a lot in it. So I feel, a few things. I, I feel very confident the Greens can get there, and I think what you're going to see over the next few years is a big increase in our support. It's starting already, and I suppose it's one of the reasons that I can leave the job feeling confident that the Greens are on the rise. Um, you talked about competition from other parties. When a mining billionaire, according to him at least, can throw 60 or $70 million at an election campaign, yeah, of course it makes it tough. But, but that's not a democracy. Right? That's, that's actually somebody buying influence. So, I mean, that's one of, the, one of the big problems we face in our politics. We've got to clean it up. And if you want to have people's voices represented in this place, We've got to get donations reform. We haven't made enough progress on that. It's one of the things that I've been frustrated by is both the major parties don't want to take on donations reform. And we've had the donations data out today. I think Larissa will probably say a few things about that too, but obviously the gas lobby throwing their checks books around. Uh, we've now got a national anti-corruption watchdog on the agenda. The Greens put it there, so I'm proud of that. Um, but you only need to look. My, my view's always been based on What's the evidence telling us? The evidence is showing over the past 30 years the vote for both major parties has been on the decline. It's falling off a cliff. And the vote for third parties is increasing. The last few elections have been won by, you know, a seat or two. We're going to have to get used to power-sharing parliaments in Australia. That is the future for Australian parliaments. And when we achieve that, what you're going to see is a different sort of politics that produces the sort of results we got in 2010. Yeah. Now, we almost got there at the last election. We almost got there at the election before that. When the major party vote continues to decline, as it's been doing, what you are going to see is third parties fill that space. And, uh, you know, the Gillard government, uh, with the support of the Greens and independents, set up a power-sharing agreement that got pollution down for the first time in this nation's history. And if we'd stuck with that scheme, we might not be 
where we are today.